Hey, y'all, I'm Shane Sams, the host of the Membership Masters Podcast. I'm a self-employed, location-independent, online entrepreneur, and I have built multiple successful membership businesses of my own. I've helped thousands of other people start, build, and grow membership sites online, and I'm here to help you do the same. I started this podcast to help business owners just like you create incredible memberships and subscriptions by interviewing some of the most successful online entrepreneurs in the world. Today's show is going to be a great one. My guest today is the author of 48 Days to the Work You Love, the legendary Dan Miller. I feel so fortunate to be able to connect with Dan on today's show. His book was a key influence early in my online journey, and Dan has touched the lives of thousands and thousands and thousands of people all over the world. On today's Membership Masters podcast, Dan and I have a conversation about his inspiring membership community, 48 Days Eagles. On this episode, you will learn why a membership community is the perfect complement for an author to combine with their books, how Dan leads, mentors, and manages the hundreds of members inside of his community, and how going through the pain of switching your membership platform could be the best thing for your community in the long term. I truly appreciated my conversation with Dan. This was the first time we had ever met, and it was a true joy-filled conversation, getting to know each other and sharing our stories with each other on the air. I came away from this interview inspired, and I learned so much from Dan Miller during our time together. I know you are going to be inspired and learn a bunch of new things too. But before we get started, I have to ask you one question. Are you ready to become a membership master today? If you are, then let's go. Welcome to the Membership Masters Podcast, brought to you by MembershipMasters.com. This is the podcast where we teach you how to get and keep more members every single month. I've helped thousands of people start, build, and grow memberships, and I interview some of the biggest membership owners anywhere online. My goal is to help you build a million-dollar membership of your own, brick by brick. Let's do it together. Come on. Dan Miller, welcome to the Membership Masters Podcast. Hey, thank you. I'm looking forward to our conversation. I know. I, 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 had to, I had to send you a bunch of extra episodes to convince you to come on, man. I had to prove that I, 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 could, I could talk on a microphone for a little while, right? <laughs> and I listened to a bunch of them. I recently uh, had a long drive in my car, so I just pulled up and listened to several segments. Had a great time. Awesome, man. Awesome stuff. I was just telling you, uh, we had just talked to a mutual friend. I just got off the phone with Pat Flynn. And, uh, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you know a lot about my story, uh, but you are a big part of my story, actually, this, this book. It's, it's amazing that the 20th, I can't believe the 20th anniversary edition of this book is coming out right now. Um, but back in 2012, um, I discovered that a, a daycare worker was actually mistreating my son, was abusing my son. He was three years old, and they were locking him in a dark bathroom for hours at a time to to punish him for potty training accidents. Oh my gosh. It was, it was horrific, man. And the day, the day that I figure out that this is the nutshell version, cause I'll give you the whole can of planners if you let me talk. But the, uh, the nutshell version was, uh, my boss would not give me the day off work. Um, I was a school teacher. My principal wouldn't let me give me the day off work to go deal with this. She actually told me, you know, I know your son needs you, but your job needs you too. And if he's not in immediate danger, you can't, you can't do this. Oh my. And man, I tell you, it was that moment that I realized this was not the life I loved. This was not the work I loved. I, I had sold my soul, Dan, for basically, you know, a, a steady paycheck that got, came on Friday and ran out on Thursday, you know? Uh -huh. So what do you do in that catalyst moment, man? You start listening and looking for other paths. So the first thing I found, um, I started going to the library and I started going to the bookstore. And this book was one of the ones that crossed my path. And it really sent me on, it really made me open my eyes. Like, wait a minute, it only takes that long. Like I can figure this out in a couple, it's not, a, you're not going to go back to school and get a master's degree and a PhD. I can just do this in a couple months. Right. And it really did. It like motivated me. It gave me hope that this wasn't like I, I hadn't, you know, I'd been a teacher for 10 years. I had a master's degree and it gave me hope. And then I found Pat and Pat inspired me. I'm actually in Pat's book, super fans, uh, my story. Yeah. 
Yeah. And like it, it inspired me. I, I was riding a lawnmower, bro. And I heard, and I heard his story. And then I went out and me and my wife, we built an online business, man. And we created the work and life we love. So before we get started, thank you, dude, for writing this book. Well, that's awesome. God, I never get tired of hearing stories like that. The story you share there about your little boy. Oh, my gosh. There are heartbreaking red flags in that on several accounts. You know, one being what's happened to your little boy not being under the care of you and your wife. And then the other one is you're in a position where with a horrific family episode going on, your boss says, no, no, no. Your job oh, yeah. is as important as your family. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it was, oh. it was unbelievable. You know, I look back in 2020 hindsight, dude, and like, like I try, you know, I'm a Christian. I try to be a really forgiving person. And like, I look back at that moment. I always look at the rationale for people because, you know, I worked with kids for 10 years. I was a football coach. So you get a lot of psychology, right? And I look back and think that at that moment, she was trying to like teach me some kind of wisdom or lesson or in her mind, I don't think she realized how callous uh, that it sounded. You know what I'm saying? And, but yeah, I'm kind of glad she did it because it was, it was the, it was the push out of the nest to go out and build an online business and start memberships and help other people that, you know, that's my mission now, Dan, is that I help people not ever have to deal with a boss again. That's my sole goal in life. I'll help you get a hundred people to pay $50 a month, make $60,000 a year in your membership. You ain't got to worry about it no more. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that woman may have helped a lot of people by hitting me in the mouth <laughs> that day, you know? Golly. Well, the opportunities today, you know, the funny thing is in the circumstances that we're dealing with right now, a lot of people feel trapped. Mm. A lot of people feel just immobilized and you know what there's a whole lot of people that are seeing new opportunities all around them yes i, I that, talked to a friend of mine this morning jesse cole who who owns the savannah bananas baseball team so obviously you know right now you can't come to any baseball game really you can come to his he's got a four thousand seat stadium that he typically sells out because he's so outrageous with his marketing antics but right now they limit it so it's sold out at 2,000 seats. Every game sells out weeks in advance. So they have the spacing there. But also, he and his wife were just thinking about this with all the challenges right now. And one of the things they came up with is, why is baseball a seasonal sport? They live in Savannah, Georgia. Why can't you play baseball 365 days a year? Mm. We have a Halloween game. Why can't we have a midnight game on New Year's Eve? I love the way people are seeing things that have been done traditionally, a lot of times these, these circumstances are just a wake up call. And we look at things that have been done in the same way. And why has it always been done that way? Why can't we do something totally different? But so that we got those kind of three camps, people who feel trapped by virtue of what they're doing now, they're immobilized because, gee, we can't do anything until things come back to normal. Are you kidding me? And then people who are just seeing new opportunities in spite of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I was uh, when I, I was in California on March 2nd, flying home, and I was looking down at my phone on Twitter, and I kept seeing what was happening in China, right? Like, like man, and I, I kept texting my wife, Dan, I kept saying, are they not telling us something? Like, what's going on here, right? Nobody knew. We get back, school gets canceled. Uh, our governor comes on and says, hey, I, I, I need you to make your kids leave the room. And then two minutes later, he goes, listen, I know some of the words that I say are going to make some of you unemployed. We're going to do everything we can for you. And I look over at my wife again. I'm like, what is happening? This is unbelievable. And after he got done saying the economy was shutting down, like all the things, of course, the first thing you have to think about your family and your business. And I, I tell my wife that day, I said, we're not going quietly into the night, baby. <laughs> we're not, we're not late. we've got to figure out how to move through this scenario. And I think that's, what's really cool about, building a life you love, building work you love, doing, doing this thing called life, you know, on your own, kind of building it as you go, like you talk about, is when you create it, when you find it, and then you create it, all of a sudden you, you feel empowered. Like even in the scary, this has been the scariest thing in my life to go through and guide my children through and my, sp my spouse and my business. But man, it was, it really did make me say, you know what though, I feel like I'm in control for the first time in my life. I feel like we've got this. You know, I promised myself uh, after I, I left that principal's office that day, dude, and I drove home and I looked at myself in the rearview mirror and I said, 
this will never happen again. I'm taking control. I may drown, but I'm going to, I'm going to be the one swimming. And I think entrepreneurs, guys like authors, you know, course creators, membership owners, like we've thrived. And uh, it's because we, we did take the chance to build that life we love, you know? Oh, wow. You know, I, I was telling my wife just the other day, I almost feel guilty because, mm. you know, people ask you, gee, how are you doing? You know, how are you struggling through this? We haven't struggled at all. Everything yeah. we do has been fueled by what's happening. More people looking for new opportunities, just like you're describing. More people looking for coaching, more people looking for community. I mean, everything we're doing has been stimulated by the uncertainty that other people feel. Now, I, I, my heart breaks for those who are trapped in traditional kind of models where they feel like they are not in control. But you're a great example, just what you described. You just decided, I'm going to put myself in the driver's seat. And you know, that can come across as being arrogant or self-centered. Or It's not meant to be that at all. It's just, why would you live your life where you knew you were vulnerable to a system, other people, and all that? You don't have to be hard driving in your face or anything. You just make the decision. I need to create a life where I am in the driver's seat. And yeah. Countless opportunities to do that. Uh, I, uh, Dan, I, 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 I was, when I was a football coach, it's so funny you say that because even like before what happened with my son that really pushed me out of the nest, right? I was a coach in another system. I was a social studies teacher. I had tenure. I mean, I'm the safest job in the world, right? Safest job in the world. So the school districts decided to combine the two high schools to save money. They consolidated, right? Well, guess what? You only need one football coach. And guess what happens when you consolidate schools? Tenure resets for every teacher because it's a new school. The two old schools are gone, right? Wow. And, I, and the other guy was from the county, had been there his whole life. Great dude. I love the guy. He's not a bad guy at all. It's, it's, I don't blame him for any of this. I was the outsider, and I did not get picked as the head coach. He did, right? Wow. And, uh, and it was, that was probably the first moment I realized that not only can your boss work against you, but the, the system can work against you. And like, when you do that, you're, you're really putting your life totally over into somebody else's hands when you're getting that paycheck every two weeks. Like, you don't get to decide if they make good decisions and the business goes under. You don't get to make decisions and keep your job. There's always something um, that, that could happen. And, and granted, there's something in the business that could happen too. But I told uh, Jocelyn just the other day, I said, listen, worst case scenario, we'll figure out who still has jobs. We'll drive to their house and wash their cars while they work. <laughs> we'll, figure, we'll figure something out because we're entrepreneurs. That's what we're going to do now. Well, as entrepreneurs too, and you certainly know this well, we typically develop multiple streams of income where we're not dependent on just one source. Amen. I have things that are dependent on linear income where I do something once and get paid once, but I have a whole lot of things in place whereby I like a book, you know, course membership site and so on where there's continuity there. And it would take a long time for those to dry up. Yes. You know, the book you're holding there has been around. This is a 20th anniversary edition. My gosh. I mean, my grandkids are going to be getting royalties in that book. If I'd ever do anything again, Oh, that's legacy, baby. That's what it's all about, right? And, you know, it's fun. this is a great pivot. Good pivot. I appreciate the pivot into memberships, Dan. I was going to get there eventually. But the, I, I, uh, these conversations, uh, my wife laughs at me. She's like, y'all just talk. Because the other podcast that we do is kind of like a little more pr produced and everything. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what's so awesome about it. We just get to talk. But um, the membership model, that's one, one thing I do love about it so much. I mean, we have coaching. We have other products that we sell. I got a high ticket workshop and that are linear, like you said. Like I show up, I teach it for eight weeks. It's a blast and it's over. Uh -huh. But the membership is really interesting because, you know, if I got, you know, I always tell people hundred, you know, if you get a hundred people to pay $50 a month to make 60 grand a year. Right. But really, if you get a thousand people to pay 85, that's a million, you know, if you just do the math and once you have a membership, it's not like that almost is a thousand different streams of income. Cause you've got a thousand human beings that's in a right. thousand different places that are all paying you monthly. And if you, if you did nothing and your average membership was eight months, well, you got a runway before they all attrition out and some of them are going to stick around longer because of the average, it's not going to disappear like overnight. You know what I mean? It's so easy to see the contrast when you are a teacher and you have a principal, you have one customer that you have to please. If that customer 
decides to stop doing business with you, you're dead in the water. Mm. A membership and you have a thousand members in there. What happens if one decides they don't like you anymore? Big deal. Right. One out of a thousand, you replace that. I mean, you, you increase your security as soon as you have two people in a membership site. Yeah, man. It's unbelievable. You increase your security, not decrease. People are worried about leaving, you know, real jobs because of the security. Are you kidding me? A lot of people realize in the last few months here, it was just the illusion of security. It yes, sir. And just like you described, schools consolidate. All of a sudden, you thought you had tenure. Nope. We're going to reset and start over. Yeah. You don't have any control in that way. And, uh, we, and we have multiple businesses and multiple memberships. Like we're totally spread so far. Like here's another crazy thing that happened when coronavirus kicked out. So I have an education company. So the first business that Joss and I launched as a membership um, it was called elementarylibrarian.com. And we created a full curriculum for librarians because most people don't realize that a librarian teaches every kid in the school every day at the elementary level. They come through, they learn information technology, they learn reading, they learn all these skills, right? And the textbook companies had neglected it. We found this hole in the market. Jocelyn couldn't, she was a librarian. That's what my wife did. She worked in the schools too. And so we said, hey, what if we created a month of lesson plans? And so Jocelyn started blogging for about three months, built a little following, got a little email list going, about 200 people, built a little Facebook page. And, uh, you know, I'm a teacher in Southeast Kentucky at this time, Dan. I'm making, I'm baby bringing home 2250 a month. You know what I'm saying? Me and my wife together were maybe making four to five, right? Yeah. She launches, we make two, $2,500 in one month off member, off people, individual teachers buying these things. So she launches that. We ended up selling that, but we also have a social studies website company where we sell social studies lessons to school districts. Like we're in like four or 500 schools all over the country, right? Dude, when the coronavirus hit, I thought, oh no, the education company is going to collapse because everybody went home. There were no schools, right? No. They still had to teach virtually. They still had to show their work. They still, our, 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 our education company grew. The memberships exploded. And now we've got hundreds of people in hundreds of school districts. You know, maybe Idaho goes back to school. Maybe Nashville doesn't, right? But it doesn't matter. Our risk is spread so far and wide. I have 50 quid. I'll gain 51 and grow this month, yep. you know? And then that gives me two different industries to also spread my risk mm-hmm. with all those people. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. Absolutely. It's cool. So tell me about your membership. Now, this is interesting. I, I actually, I don't think I knew you had a membership in the past, but my, I interviewed a good friend of ours, Brian Dixon on the show. And I, and I said, Hey, tell me somebody, you know, that has a great membership. And he's like, you know, Dan Miller's got a membership. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, it's the Eagles thing, man. You got to check this out. I start looking at it and I'm like, where has this been all my life? <laughs> like, I, like, so tell, tell me a little bit about the 40, it's 48 days. Eagles community is what you call this, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things. It was kind of a natural evolution in being an author, having a book, and then people ask for more resources. So we create a seminar, you know, workshops, other ancillary courses, of course, other, other books that go along with that. But most of those things are one-time interaction with the recipient, the reader, the listener, one time, and then you go on from there. It's a transaction and hopefully it impacts them as you talk about, you know, it impacts them for a long period of time, but they don't really have access to me or other people who may have been experiencing the same thing, which opens the door. It's a pretty natural kind of place. All right. If you have an audience already, this gives them another way to connect with each other, to share ideas and resources. That's what I wanted. And it has worked so beautifully beyond my expectations. So we created the 40 Days Eagles community. It's $48 a month, just saved with our signature number <clears throat> and there being 48 everything. So it's $48 a month. And the way people share so generously is mind blowing. And what we were able to do very quickly is identify emerging leaders, people who really had area of expertise in particular areas that far surpassed my own. We make them leaders, mm. we do a thing called monthly uh, Monday mentor where we have somebody, often somebody within the community, sometimes somebody outside like Pat Flynn or somebody we bring in from the outside to talk to our community. We do that. Right now we have Eagle's Nest going on. We have this Eagle symbolism throughout the whole community. So we have Eagle's Nest. We have 10 groups that are operating right now as we speak. 
limited to 20 people each where they go deep in a particular topic. So we have a podcasters group, a speaking coach, a ministry Ooh. business group. Um, I'm doing a group on Will It Fly where I'm walking people through how to make their first $10,000 a month. So I've got people in that group and we're building models based on what it is they're doing to get them to that level. And do you charge extra for that or is it just part of the $48 a month, no, the, the nests? Part, it's part of the part of the monthly membership. Oh, I love that. It's amazing. Quarter and it's just first come, first serve. And boy, those wow. fill up instantly. Yeah. I mean, if you do one of those sessions and like you, you take something like, let's take podcasting, like, you know, podcasting is not a, eh, let's show up and get a mic. You know, there's like, there's a process to it and you got to help each other and you got to, you got to set up Libsyn and you got to set up this and that and the other, like that could be an eight week process maybe for it's, this Eagle's Nest program. Like these 20 people go through, Hey, in eight weeks, we're all going to launch our podcast together. Right. And, and that, that builds in that retention, Oh, because my. they're because they're going deeper and it's longer than the month and they just why charge more just keep people around longer and add new people to the mix you know and we offer those four times a year so every quarter and what happens people can only participate in one so this month they'll do the podcast and they go, oh my god oh yeah they got to do another one later i want to be in the speaking group gee i want to be in the coaching group so they have to stick around till those show up again and then be first in the group. So there, there's yeah, incredible retention with that. And what we do too, the leaders of those groups are all people we've identified as experts in those areas. Mm. We don't pay them, they're volunteers. They love doing it, they feel like it's an honor to do it. But it also exposes them as an expert, which opens the members up to extended services that those people have, which we welcome. And, and also what that does too is like, you know, if you can send somebody a client, they ain't never going to quit your membership. That ain't going to happen. Right. And, uh, cause we saw that happen at our, we do a live event, uh, called flip your life live. And so we have a hundred people in our community. We only sell a hundred spots cause we want to keep it where it's intimate. Right. And we had a lady last uh, time, her name was Shay Harms and she was really struggling with her business, like getting clients and stuff like that. But she's a long time community member, just a great person. Awesome. Shay holler if you're listening but like uh we made uh that the second year we did the event we made table leaders and we did the same thing we're like well who do we know that's an expert well nikki roush is an expert in sales and shay is an expert in wordpress or whatever we made her a table leader and we told people she's the wordpress expert she had, they, they were 10 deep. No, nobody even noticed we were in the room. They were all trying to get to Shay, right? And then she got clients. She filled up her client and she walked up to me. Me and uh, Jocelyn and the kids went out on the stage right at the end to take a picture. And then we were going to go backstage again. And uh, Shay came up and she was like, I've got four or five people that are just begging to work with me. And I just, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm like, go kill it. You've always been able to kill it. We just had to connect you with the right people. And like, that's the same thing here. Like yeah. if those 20 leaders you're going to send them 20 people. Somebody's going to stick with them with whatever they do. Totally. And now everybody's happy, right? Totally. Hey, last year we had something happen, a book publisher in a group. And it's amazing the people that have come in. We have physicians and attorneys, um, just an amazing array of people, but a book publisher. And he said, would you be open to the idea of me putting together a little book, 48 inspirational stories or meditations, devotionals, and we'll just open the door to people in the community to submit those. We'll put together 48. I said, geez, that's be a beautiful idea. Well, he opened the door. He put that together. He had to narrow down to make it 365. Wow. 365 individual contributions from members that's put together in a beautiful book with an eagle on the front, and it's called Time to Fly. So, you know, people, and now what do you think those people are going to do? Oh. They're part of a project where they have their contribution in a book that's readily available, Time to Fly. I mean, talk about retention. We just have a blast looking for these kind of things. You know, as you know, not to be manipulative in any way, but to give people a voice, mm. to give them a sense of community, yeah. give a way to be heard and to have things answered that they're struggling with. And wow, I mean, as, 
as uh, Stu McLaren, you know, our mutual friend talks about too, people come for content, but they stay for community. Amen. Yeah. So we work on creating a community. We have people say, I've looked my whole life for this in a church and never found it. Isn't that crazy? Now I find, now I found what I was looking for. The, uh, it, it, we have a, I've got a Voxer group uh, with a couple guys, but uh, Cliff Ravenscraft and uh, Mark Mason are in this Voxer group where we chat back and forth. We talk about keto. That's what we talk about in this group. Right. And, it, you know, Cliff's all into keto. Yeah. And, uh, but he said, uh, we were talking one day, we were talking about like, I think it was right when all this, like it stopped and churches got canceled basically. And he was like, you know, what's cool. He goes like a lot of people are really struggling because they've kind of lost their communities. Like, you know, what's really cool. He goes, I get more community out of these Voxer conversations and in my communities that I'm in than I do going to church sometimes, right? Like you just go sit on the back pew and you're in and out and you, it's almost like a tick of box thing, right? And he's like, no, nah, man, these, we've got these virtual communities that like keep us all connected together. H how do you guys create community, Dan? Do you guys like, do you have a Facebook group? Do you have a forum? Do you have, like, how, do you, how do you talk to each other virtually uh, in between like live sessions and stuff? Uh, we're in Mighty Networks. Oh, perfect. Okay. So, so we use Money Networks. Mine. I looked at everything that was available out there. We did have a Facebook group initially. And uh, personally, I just was really discouraged with the distractions, the intrusions. The, you open up and 50% of the real estate is not under our control. And I said, we got to do something with it. And if Facebook turns it off, it's over. Oh, my gosh. No kidding. It's such a risk, you know? Yeah. So I uh, interviewed Gina Bianchi you know, the founder of, of Mighty Network. She's just an absolute rock star and was totally impressed. I had had a group previously in Ning, which she was co-founder of as well. And we built an audi a big audience in there. And then when she came along with Mighty Networks, we moved from Facebook to Mighty Networks. Now that was an excruciating move. There's no question about it. I mean, Facebook is so ubiquitous. Everybody has it. It's right there in your face all the time. And we lost about a third of what we had as community at that point. We had about 600 people. We lost about a third when we came across. And I said, I don't care. This is where we're going to be. I have never regretted that move at all. So it's clean. It's totally ours. The functionality is amazing. And they keep improving it every day. So it's in there. And there's hundreds of conversations going on at any given time. It's there? amazing. Yeah, I've not had it. I've looked at Mighty Networks, but I've not had time to fully explore it for our community. Does that make sense? Like, cause I've, uh, we, we're kind of stuck in the, we have a forum is that is what we do. Like we, when we started our community back in 2014, <laughs> there was no Mighty Networks. It was like, all right, where's BB Press and how do I install it? You know? And that's how, but it was amazing though, because like we have like a hundred thousand posts over like six years, like of people talking, right? And all that content it belongs to us. Nobody can turn that off. Nobody can keep that. But we just switched to Kajabi as our main platform. And we're seeing like, we're, we're going through a three month period of about 20% churn because man, it's hard to switch plat. That's one, I think negative about a membership. You know, if you want to put your stuff on teachable and you want to move to something else, you just do it. And the next thing you say, all oh, goes there. But when you're moving your community and you're teaching new habits to a group of people, there's going to be some people that filter, you know, through the, through the cracks. Right. But you get more retention on the back end. I think it's what probably you saw, right? That's exactly my position from day one. If it's not important enough to people to go through the learning curve, to join us here, they're not really the people we want involved anyway. Mm. We just took that approach. And once we got there, we got stabilized, we regained, got back to that number. And now, now we're continuing to grow and, more and more people, you know, rec now we got the buzz of happy members, you know, spreading the word. And yeah. That's the method of growth is what comes organically from happy members. And it's, it's not that big of an obstacle at all to be on Monday Networks. We have in there topical areas. So somebody can hashtag anything. It goes into a topical area. So somebody new comes in and they're interested in coaching. There's an immense archive of content that deals specifically with that. All the Monday mentor calls, they're archived. They can go back and hear a year ago, you know, when I had Leslie Samuel on there, I just had Leslie on again this Monday to talk about blogging. So we have, those are all archived in there, but the wealth of content with no interruptions 
nobody begging you to come join another group or whatever. I just, I, I can't imagine not having something comparable to that. That um, you are a well-known author and you're well-known in the entrepreneur space, speaking, things like that. And did you find when you launched this, what year did you launch the 48 Days Eagles? How long, how long ago was that? Years ago. So 17. A 17. Okay. So I would say the initial draw was, hey, I'm in here too right? Like you got to fill the thing up. But did you find, um, this is something I actually just talked to Pat about and what we experienced this as well. At first it was kind of like the, the positioning of the expert. Like, Hey, you get to hang out with me and Jocelyn, you get to hang out with Pat, you get to hang out with Dan. But did you find the more you stepped out of the way that the dynamo of the community conversation picked up? Cause this is something, this is a fear that I hear a lot of membership owners. They'll get a hundred members and they're like, I don't want to change anything. Or I, I got to, I'm there every day talking and starting every conversation and replying like okay. to everything. But heck, how involved are you in those conversations? And then do you, did you find that it helped like to let the other people just talk to each other or like, how did, how did you make that transition or facilitate from, wow, I'm hanging out with Dan Miller and his group to nah, man, you're in a community of like-minded people that love you. Let's go. Yeah, you, you could see little glimpses of that. You talked about if you go to a conference somewhere, it's you and Jocelyn and your kids. I mean, somebody may come up. I mean, a lot of people are going to come up, I assume, and talk to Jocelyn. Where For sure. That's, that's not talking to Shane, but it's really close. Or even talking to one of your kids or somebody who's on your team. So there's that effect immediately. It may not be just Dan, but it's going to be somebody who's been really close. And then we had all these people who had been impacted by the 40 days message who are recognized coaches, speakers, authors in our community. Anyway, people that they've heard me talk about on a podcast and all of a sudden they're in this community as well. So the ripple effect was really instantaneous. Mm. Now I love spending time in there, but I don't just live there. I mean, I spend probably 30 minutes a day in sure. the community. I do start some conversations, but a lot of times I'll see somebody who asks a question and rather than being the first to answer, which can give the impression, okay, there's the answer. We don't need to, no, I wait. And, or, I, or I pop on there and I see a question that was asked an hour ago and there's already 10 other people who have given their advice and opinion where their expertise far surpasses my own. And I love that. So yeah. I don't feel the responsibility to be the go-to guy at all. I mean, people ask questions about technology. I'm not your guy. <laughs> Me neither. I'm not either. <laughs> not at all, dude. I can't, I, 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 it's a miracle that I'm even on the internet. I'm in Southeast Kentucky right now. So don't, don't start talking to me about all this tech stuff, man. Yeah. So, and we, we have health questions. We have physicians, veterinarians, pharmacists in there. They're going to address those things. I'll oftentimes tag somebody that I know mm. had a question today. Somebody wants to know how to expand his, he's a landscape architect. And now he wants to be online, have an online presence rather than having to see people physically. Well, I connected him with a number, another member in there, Jeff McManus. He's a perfect connection. Jeff can explain to him exactly how to be online and explode a business as he's done with his landscape business. It's awesome, dude. And Jocelyn, uh, she said one time on one of our podcasts, we were talking to uh, one of our members, our, our podcast, we bring our other podcast, Flip Lifestyle, we bring on our members and we actually do coaching calls with them. So it's kind of like, it's our reward for posting success stories, basically. Like we, we, we tell our members, all right, if you post success stories and we don't care if it's, I wrote a blog post or I quit my job, anywhere in between, doesn't matter. That's how we look for podcast guests on our show, right? And she, Jocelyn was, was coaching them about the membership one day and she was like, you know, what's funny is, <clears throat> you don't have to answer the question. You don't even really have to, to be involved in the question, but if you can get them to the answer, whether that's like tagging somebody or even one of our people on our team goes in and says, oh, you need to watch this course Shane made, right? You totally get credit for it. You totally get credit for solving that problem for them, right? And that's, that's just so, that doesn't happen with courses, but in memberships it does because you've, 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 it's almost like you've given them a shortcut even past Google. They don't got to search. Right. They got people there ready to help them and pull the book off the shelf and go read this one. And that's just, it's just something that doesn't happen anywhere else. Yep. It's beautiful to watch. Awesome stuff. Do you have a team like runs the community or who runs your team for you? Like who, who, who handles that tech stuff that you don't like the best with? Like, or do you have a community manager or is it just kind of self-sustaining in Mighty Networks? 
No, we, I have key people who are in there. My daughter has worked with me for 18 years. So she's really our key community leader in there. Awesome. But what a blessing. Have, Unbelievable. And we have a community manager who addresses, you know, sees all the incoming support questions. Um, gee, somebody needs to be admitted in. Somebody had a problem with their payment or she takes care of all that kind of stuff. Then we have a tech guy as well who handles the tech issues. We do use Kajabi for all of our courses. We have a pretty robust product suite that they have access to, but also courses they can buy. So there are those things. You know, there's a lot of moving pieces. I mean, people can come in using Stripe or PayPal. It has to be integrated. We use WooCommerce. Mm. You know, all those things have to be integrated. And again, those are the things I know nothing about at all. So yeah, I've got a really great team, but it's, it's primarily three people. Beyond that, then are the volunteer leaders in the community. So I've already appointed a dean of speaking, a dean of coaching, where they offer their content and leadership in those areas. Those are volunteer positions, not paid, but it gives those people high visibility, their area of expertise. And then beyond that, I mean, we just start to identify real quickly people who really are go-to people in the community. And we affirm them and shove stuff their way dramatically. We had a single mom in our community who needed to get out of an abusive household. We wrapped our arms around her, provided resources and connections for her to do that, and then funneled her work. She does oh, love it. editing, book editing. She's really, really good. We exploded her business in that community. She now has hired four other gals who she subs work to, but she, now she's getting opportunities, you know, to speak at major conferences and all that. That was done a hundred percent in this community. I love seeing things like that happen. Yeah. It feels like you're, it feels like you're in your own little world, doesn't it? Like when you really get the community thing, like when you stop worrying about the community, like there's a point in the beginning, about a hundred to 300 members, where you're like, Oh, I hope this thing doesn't catch fire and burn to the ground. Right. Like, it's like, is this, this going to stop? But then like when it gets that little momentum, and you start seeing those, it's almost like your own little village that you, <laughs> that you get to live in and get to know Bob and you run through the pub and you go to church and like, you just see all these people and you, and you just, you just know them. Right. And what's weird is when I'm Facebook friends with our, our, our so our, our mem- I'll, I'll add our members if they've been around for a while on Facebook. Right. But it's weird. Cause then you just forget the, the, the lines of reality <laughs> just blur. I don't know who I know and who I don't really know <laughs> anymore. Like in real life. The, uh, hey, what's uh, What's it like working with your child for that long? Because like our kids, uh, Isaac now is uh, almost 12 and Anna Jo is nine. Uh, so they are actually involved. We have a paper newsletter. It's another subscription. It's the, it's the newsletter that goes along with this podcast. And uh, so it's like a marketing calendar that we send out. I, I love it. It's like old school. I, I've got, uh, you know, the old typewriter font. I write it yeah. in old typewriter font. It's on, we, I actually bought or a, a, a leased a commercial printer and we got the publishing in-house baby. And my kids print it and ship it. And they've got these little stamps that say, packed by Isaac and Anna Joe, and they, they stamp them on there. But man, I tell you some, some, some Saturdays when we go do that, it's a, it's, it's them knuckleheads, man. I'm like, we gotta, we gotta work. I don't know how I would do that. I'm I'm thinking 18 years of them packing stuff. I'm gonna have to find them a a new job, man. But how do you manage that? Like uh, working with your kids? Ashley's role has changed dramatically, but she was working with me when she was a teenager, the age of your kids, where she'd go to seminars and hand things out. Then she became really proficient in understanding the disc. And so when she was 17, 18, I started having her explain that part in seminars that I was doing. And she went off to college, you know, went to the University of Tennessee, continued to work for me during that time virtually. She graduated and I said, geez, don't you want to go, you know, experiment with the real world? She says, nope, I want to do what, what you're doing. I want to be part of this. Wow. She is my number one cheerleader. But here's the other thing. She's my gold standard. She is the standard by which I measure anybody that we knew that we consider bringing onto our team because she's that good. That's awesome. She loves the community. That was, that was new. I mean, we didn't have that 18 years ago. We didn't have that five years ago. She was doing other things with me. When the community came along, boy, she took to it like a fish to water. And she amazing. thrives in that environment. I'm way more introverted than she is. So she's really 
the face of the community, the voice. She schedules events and all of that. She's in there every day just making things rock. I, I pray. Uh, that, that's kind of my dream. I don't ever want to pigeonhole my kids. Yep. Like I like that. Like, hey, listen, I want you to do what you want to do. But if you want this, I want to work to provide that opportunity for you. You know what I'm saying? It's a and, nice uh, kind of thing. And, and certainly I've had a discussion with Ashley. I mean, being the guy who, who writes about finding a work you love, the last thing I want is one of my own children doing work that it's dad's dream and not their own. Oh, yeah. So I've had the sure. conversation multiple times with Ashley. Look, if you want to go do something else, you know, boy, do it with my blessing. But if she just keeps coming back. <laughs> right. She's, she, you, if you, you, feed the, you feed them and they keep coming back. That's what happens. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. If you, you put some food out for them, they're just going to keep coming back, Dad, every time, man. Now she's grown and married and has three daughters of her own. And who knows? They may come into this eventually. Yeah. That's what they, that's what they say. I mean, I got a whole bunch of grandkids. I got two sons as well, but a whole bunch of grandkids. And they all say when they grow, they want to work with Papa. That's amazing. That's give them all things to do. Yeah, yeah, man. And I love it. And can creating something that will live past us is another, like, I don't want the flip your life community to die with me. If I get hit by a bus, I don't want it to go away. Right. So we got to, we got to build I think once you build it for yourself, then you got to build something that, man, I just don't need me anymore. Like that's, that's the, my next goal is, man, I don't need me at all. I'm good. I don't even need to podcast. It just, it works. <laughs> right. Well, let, let me, let me, let me pivot here a little bit. Cause I want to talk about your new book. Cause that's, that, that's awesome that this thing's coming out. So this thing is revised and expanded. Okay. And so what did you do? Like, what did you put in the book that was different? Like, how did you update this to kind of make it the new the new version, the expanded version, the, you know, the world is very different. The world's different than two months ago, Dan. It's way oh different God. than 20 years ago, right? So like, what did you do inside of here to make everything like, uh, like different? You know, I just got a note this morning from uh, Mark Victor Hansen's assistant. Uh, Mark Victor Hansen, the co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, right. hundreds of millions of books. He just wrote a new book. And because of my connection with him, they wondered if I would interview him which I'm thrilled to do. I went to a conference of his in 2002 and I thought, boy, this guy knows how to sell books. Let's go, let's go to this. So I, I tapped my buddy, Dave Ramsey on the shoulder and I said, Hey, let's go to this. So we took our wives and we went and sat there. We were both brand new in this thing, 2002, so 18 years ago, we came back and I had a real rudimentary version of this book. And in the next 18 months, I sold over $2 million worth of what I had. Wow. I've updated it every five years. So the first version came out in 2000, updated it in 2005, 10, 15, and now 20. The core message, how to figure out how God has uniquely gifted you and how to turn that into meaningful, purposeful, and profitable work on Monday morning stays the same. But about 60% of the book is new over time because the application has changed. So in here, I've got things in this brand new version, things like overcoming the upper limit challenge, the diminishing importance of degrees. I mean, no surprise, things are really changing there. More and more companies are saying, we don't care if you have a degree or not. Oh, yeah. what you've done the last two years. Finding your unique zone of genius. What is it that makes, puts you into a category of one? How to handle artificial intelligence interviews. I mean, people are freaked out where they may be interviewed three times and never have a human on the other end. That's crazy, man. What, 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 what are we talking about? <laughs> Think about that, man. What, where are we going in five years, man? What's, a, what's the 25th anniversary edition going to happen? Well, I, I, hey, I got, I got some insight, and I'm already making notes on that. I mean, I'm so excited about pulling things together that will be in the 2025 edition. Also, I talk about digital nomads. I mean, my daughter, I talked about, they're full-time travelers. They live on the road, have for over four years. So they're everywhere in the country. They've been in all 48 states. They go anywhere they want to. She works for me, though. And because of technology, she's able to do that. And then I got how to build a side business with only 15 hours a week. So th some of those, those things are brand new. Now, to keep the book the same length, I mean, I can't end up with a 600-page book. To keep it the same, some things have to come out. And that's always a painful process to strip things out. But I have to get these new things in to make it relevant. And I, I love the response I'm getting to some of these new areas that we've included. 
That's it's amazing. It, it really resonates with me because like, you know, like our story generate was generated because, you know, we wanted to be there for our family. Like I, I wanted to create a scenario um, where if my son ever needed me, nobody could ever actually tell me no again. Like that was my goal. That's, that was what success looked like when we wrote it down. Like we've had, we've experienced things that I still can't wrap my brain around like financially and, and things like, and opportunities, like to even just talk to you, that's unbelievable privilege. And like, you know, so that, those have been amazing, but that was kind of like the core of our message. And I actually, my son, uh, two, last, the year before last 2018 or 17, he was at his babysitter's and he jumped, he was jumping on a trampoline and he landed on his head. My son loves getting himself into nonsense. It's ridiculous. But anyway, the, uh, his neck was killing him, hurting really bad. And my ba- the babysitter called me and said, you got to get over here. Something's wrong. We took him to the, ho- to the e- uh, emergency first care, the fast stuff, not the ER. They did an x-ray and thought he had broke his neck. They came in with neck braces, put him on a board. We, uh, we took him to the hospital. My buddy, uh, I was texting him on the way there. I was like, he works in the ER. He runs it. We were there three or four hours, Dan. It was total chaos. Isaac's freaking out and screaming. He's already claustrophobic. He's tied to a board. They're trying to figure out if he's broke his spine on his, in his neck. Jocelyn walks in and goes, everything's going to be okay. And she just hit the ground. She passed out when she saw eyes. I'm standing in the middle of the ER. On my right, Jocelyn's laying in the floor. On my left, Isaac's screaming, where's my mom? Like, all, it's, I, I just turned around. You ever get those moments where you just get so emotional? You, you want to cry, but you laugh. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like that, that's what happened, right? So this big rigmarole goes, goes down, and we finally, we come back, false positive, neck's not broke, going to be sore for a while. Okay, no paralyzation. We're good. Let's go. go. And we're walking home, or go, walking back to the car. I put Isaac in the back seat, and I looked in the rearview mirror, and I caught his eye, and I said, are you okay? And he goes, yeah. And then he just, he just blurts out, I'm glad you were there. And I had clear, I had dropped everything, dude. I worked for myself. I just left. It was the middle of the day. Didn't have to ask nobody. And I realized like that was the moment uh. that I was freaking looking for that day. I was mad at myself looking in the rearview mirror. Right. And that's become the, like the core of our mission. Like is like, it's gotta be balanced between work and family. And I, I, I bring this up because I was reading the book that you, you sent me a book, which is awesome, dude. Thank you very much for that. And uh, you sent me two actually. So I'm going to give one to somebody that needs to read it. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. It might, it, I, that's going to end up being a, a graduation present. what that's going to be. All right. But um, you, on page 28, you said, it's not just what you do in your job or your business that will identify you as a success or failure. And like, man, I just appreciate somebody in this world saying those words in their, in their book and in their work, because we hear so many other things, man, like work 70 hours, 15 hour days, you know, work for somebody else and grind and put in and maybe, maybe retire someday. But like, it's just amazing to me that a book like this even exists in our culture. And, um, it's an awesome book, dude. Well, thanks. Hey, you may notice that there are two words circled on the front cover. Those words are addition. They've never been there before. And life. 48 yeah. days to the work and life you love. Because more and more, the stories I hear, like yours, I recognize, it, yeah, work, having work that you love is really important. But at the end of the day, unless you have a life that you love, the work isn't really going to matter. Mm. So we inserted that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really proud of our team, what we did to, to put that in there as a very, very important addition. 48 days to the work and life you love. I love it, man. Awesome. Well, I think that's a good place to, uh, to wrap this up. I know, you're, I know our schedules are tight. We've been coordinating here for a couple of days, man. But uh, man, thank you so much for coming on the show and just sharing a little bit about 48 Days Eagles. I mean, I am obsessed with memberships. I'm probably going to go sign up and just get in it so I can just see, see, see one of the masters leading um, the membership site. And also too, just like to keep in the game and keep updating things and just keep like helping people. Um, I keep this rock. I need, I'm gonna send you one of these rocks it, uh, if, if you're watching on YouTube. So yeah. I, these, they're, they're skipping stones, right? Now on one side it says flip your, and uh, the other side it says life. And I keep this on my desk. Um, there's a famous quote, it's one of my most inspirational quotes I've ever read from Mother Teresa. A uh, reporter asked her, can you, do you really think you can change the world? And uh, she laughed at him and said, you know, I don't think I can change the world alone, 
but I can cast my stone upon the waters and cause many ripples. And uh, I know for sure that not only have you created many ripples in your community in this book, but this new revised edition is going to be causing a lot of ripples out there uh, uh, in the world. I'm happy to, happy to support it, dude. So tell everybody a little bit more about where they can go and find out about you, uh, the membership, and also uh, any information about the new version of uh, 48 Days to the Work and Life You Love. You know, you probably didn't have time to see it before we jumped on here, but we actually created a special landing page for you. Oh, I love it. If you go to 48days.com slash MM for Membership Masters, you'll see a page specifically for your listeners where they can get a, a free chapter. They can do a quiz. How close are you to the life you love? I love that little quiz. You can do that. There's some other resources there specifically for friends of Shane. Awesome, man. Well, listen, we will be sending that out all over social to our list and anywhere else we can preach it from the mountaintops. Dan Miller, you have a great day, buddy. Appreciate you, man. Thanks. Hey, you as well, Shane. Thanks. Thanks.